I have a radiant beam of light pierced through the darkness above me. As this light touched my face, I felt an awesome presence go through me, and my entire body seemed to lift off the ground and be translated up into this light and radiance. As I've been drawn up into it, I can see that it's coming from a circular shape opening far above me. I feel like a speck of dust being drawn towards this light. As I'm being drawn up towards it, I thought, is this real? I look back over my shoulder and far beneath me, I could see the darkness. Still not understanding what this light was, I began to move up to the opening, enter it. As I was drawn into the opening, I could now see there was a tunnel. As I looked along the length of it, I could see the, the source of the radiance. My first thought is the center of the universe. Look at the light. Look at the power coming from there. As I've been moved towards it, I watch as a wave of radiance comes up. As this wave of light comes off the source, it touches me, and I feel warmth, comfort. All that kind of fear and darkness just seems to go out of me, and I feel a living light go through me. Shafts of radiance came out from the central core. It was like a white fire. Phenomenal radiance in the central core. From that, I watched this brilliant light piercing out. I thought even the stars in the universe, even the constellations, must find their energy source from this focal point. What is that light? Is there someone in there, surrounded by this radiance? As I questioned that in my own mind, a voice spoke to me from the center of the light. The moment I hear his voice, I recognize it to be the same voice that spoke to me in the ambulance, telling me to the Lord's Prayer and whether I'd, whether I'd forgive. And he said, Ian, do you wish to return? If you wish to return, you must see in a new light. Words appeared in front of my eyes. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all i thought god is light could that possibly be god and in him there's no darkness at all i've just come from darkness whoever this being is he is completely separate from darkness i see no shadow i see no evil only pure white radiance and he knows my name could it possibly be god that i'm standing in the presence of talking to I thought if it is, he must be able to see my spirit absolutely naked. He must see everything. I began to pull back. As I began to pull back towards the darkness of the tunnel, I watched a wave of radiance come off him. I expected it to touch me and literally catapult me back into the pit. But as this wave of light emanated forth off him, it moved through me and all I got was love. The love was causing me to literally blubber. I was actually just bawling my eyes out. And I could feel an acceptance coming. I said, God, you can't love me. I've cursed you. More love. I said, oh, I've committed all kinds of sins. I've slipped around and taken drugs. More. As the love kept coming, I then literally divulged the, what I knew to be the most debauched things in my life. As the light began to open up, I became aware that, that standing in the center, I began to make out a man's bare feet. Around his ankles were dazzling white robes, garments. Not garments of cloth, but garments of light. As I looked out and saw that, I began to lift my face up to see the chest of the man, and, and his arms are outstretched with dazzling white robes, as if to welcome me. As I looked, I knew that I was looking upon God. You're just awestruck. You, you can't be prepared. You have no way you can be prepared to see this. You just, I stood in absolute amazement. And as I looked towards his head, his hair was white radiance. I, out of his face, appeared to be light billowing forth, literally permeating out of like the, his entire face. You couldn't see the features of his face because the light was seven to ten times brighter than all the light I'd seen, and it was literally um, uh, emanating forth from his face. I began walking closer towards him. 
I want to, I can just see his face. I'll know who God is. As I got within a few feet of his presence, I began to place my face into the light. As my, and it didn't hurt your eyes. It was like you could look into it. As I placed my face closer in towards his face, hoping I'd break through that veil, as my face did, he suddenly moved. I saw an opening in a circular shape like a window into eternity or a door into eternity. As I looked through this, I could see an entire new earth open up before me. It was like I was standing on the threshold of eternity and I was getting a glimpse into it. As I'm looking, I can see grass with the same light and life emanating forth from it. I can see flowers, fields. I knew if I stepped on the grass, it would not damage it. The color and the energy and the life emanating from it I, it was amazing. I see a, ri a river or a crystal clear stream, trees along its banks, rolling hills to the left. I look out to my right, mountains in the distance, blue, blue sky, crystal clear. I'm standing there and I'm going, this is paradise. As I'm looking, I know that I belong here. It's like I knew I had been created by God to live here. I thought, why wasn't I born here in the first place? Why was I born on this earth? I knew I'd come home. I knew I'd travel the world looking for that paradise. And here it was in front of me. I thought, I'm home. As I started to move in, his presence came right back in front of me and blocked the way. He asked me this question, he said, Ian, now that you've seen, do you wish to go in or do you wish to return? God, I'm not married. I've got no children. Nothing for me to return back for. I don't want to go back. As I look back, to my amazement, God showed me one person that had loved me. The moment I saw my mother directly behind me, I wept. I thought, I've just not only lied to God, but there is someone who loved me. And I thought, if I'm dead, and this is actually happening, and then I step through into paradise, into the presence of God. Will my dear mother have any idea that her heathenistic son prayed in that ambulance, repented of his sins, gave his life over to God, and God heard this young man and caught him up into paradise? I thought my mother will think her son went to hell. I thought she'd get a, a telegram or a telex saying your son died last night. Would you like him shipped home in a box or a jar of ashes? I thought if that happens, it could destroy her. She's suffered so much, she's lost her family. And I thought, near I, her, how selfish would it be for me to step through and leave my mother to bury me and think I went to hell? I want to go back. I was instantaneously back in my physical form in a hospital with the doctor that had been working on me holding my right foot in the air with a sharp instrument like a scalpel or a knife prodding the base of my foot. I could feel nothing, prodding it like a dead piece of meat. I hear the voice of God interrupt my thought and he said this, son. I have just given your life back. I went, what? I've just seen God. What's happening here? I felt an amazing power go through me. It was like a, a low voltage of electricity. I felt my entire body starting to feel again. And within a few hours, I was completely healed.
I said, God, what have I become? He said, you're a reborn Christian. He said, you only came in because your sins have been forgiven and the blood of Jesus covered you. The sacrifice, the atonement of Christ Jesus had covered your sins. You walked into his presence as if you were white as snow. I said, he stepped aside. He said, 2 Peter chapter 3, 10 to 18, God has created a new heaven and a new earth for those who love him. He said, this old earth will pass away. This body will pass away. But God said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Death, where is your sting? Death is swallowed up. How? Through the power of the resurrection of Jesus. The sting of death is sin, but the free gift of God is of those who repent of their sins, their sins will be forgiven, and they will step through into eternity. To live is Christ, to die is gain. <laughs> Who have I beside you, Lord? And I just went, man, he said, a new earth and a new heaven and a new Jerusalem, the city of our God, shall descend out of the new heavens onto the new earth, and there'll be no more sickness, no more suffering, no more death, and no more war, and we shall dwell with him throughout all eternity. And there is a river of life flowing from the throne of God, and those who drink from it, it's eternal life. When I had that experience, I came out of the hospital completely healed. I said, God, what's happened to me? He said, Ian, you are a reborn Christian. I said, I've never heard that term before. What does that mean? And he said, you must read a Bible. I remember over the next six weeks in 1982 reading the Bible. As I did, I said, God, what took place? He said, Ian, you are a reborn Christian. And I read it in John 3.3 3, that a man must be born again of the Spirit of God to enter the kingdom of heaven. I said, God, how did that take place? He said, Ian, in that, in that ambulance as you saw your life go before you and you saw your mother praying for you, the words came, forgive us our sins. We forgive those who have sinned against us, and we give our heart over to Jesus Christ. He said, when you pray that prayer, I forgave you and cleansed you and washed your spirit as white as snow. So there is a spiritual battle for, for our soul, kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom of light. And he said, Ian, when you turned your heart over to me, all the darkness was cleansed from your spirit in a moment in time, and the blood of Jesus washed your soul clean. I said, God, I seem to go into darkness. What is that? He said, Ian, there's a kingdom of darkness ruled by Satan, but there is a kingdom of light ruled by Jesus. He said, in the spirit realm, there is a kingdom of darkness, total separation from all light. I said, God, why did you take me through that? He said, Ian, had you not prayed in the ambulance, I'd have left you in outer darkness until the day of judgment. But I chose to show you the valley of the shadow of death, but evil could not touch you because I was with you. I said, God, I moved through a tunnel of light, he said, Matthew 7, um, 13 and 14, Narrow is the way that leads to the kingdom of God, few find it. Broad and wide is the pathway that leads to destruction and outer darkness. There is a highway of holiness, the Lord spoke to me. I said, I felt love and joy and peace. He said, My Holy Spirit brings love and joy and peace and comfort to those who love me. I said, God, I saw my arm and it was transparent. He said, Ian, in the twinkling of an eye, your perishable body will go and you'll take on immortality. Death is swallowed up in victory because the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. I said, God, I came into a, a light that seemed to fill the heavens. He said, my son Jesus is glorified. He is surrounded by unapproachable light. I said, then how did I come into that light? He said, the veil has been torn into the Holy of Holies, that we have entry in through the blood of the Lamb into the holy place. I said, I saw a man in white robes and his face shone with a radiance that seemed to fill the universe. He said, that was my son Jesus in his glorified heavenly form. He said, my son died on the cross for your sins, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But he rose again from the dead and he is, he is glorified. I said, where is that mentioned in the Bible? He said, in Revelations 1, 13 to 18, in the midst of the lampstands stood the Son of Man 
with white robes, reaching his feet. His head and his hair were white like wool, like snow, and his face shone like the sun in full strength. He said, do not be afraid. I was dead on the cross, but behold, I am alive forevermore. I hold the keys of death and Hades. I have conquered over the power of evil. I am the resurrected Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah.